OK, so we're going to find all positive integer solutions to this equation. And here we're imposing that all of our integers have to be strictly greater than 1. So let's quickly address this before we get started. Why are we saying that they all have to be greater than 1? Well, if we were to allow a and n to be equal to 1, then we could actually get a lot of solutions of the form 1 to the m plus 1 is equal to 2 to the 1. You see we get actually infinitely many solutions, but they're not particularly interesting solutions. And similarly, if we were to allow m to be equal to 1, then we could choose a as 2 to the n minus 1, raise this to the power of 1 and add 1 to this, this will always be equal to 2 to the n, whichever value of n you choose. So we get infinitely many solutions in each of these cases, but now we'll focus on the scenario where all of our integers have to be strictly greater than 1. So just looking at the original equation, a to the m plus 1 is equal to 2 to the n, you can see that 2 to the power of n, because n is a positive integer power, this is going to be an even number. So this tells you that a to the m plus 1 is going to be even, which tells you that a to the m has to be odd. So now an odd number raised to any integer power has to be odd, and vice versa, an even number raised to an integer power is going to be even. So this actually tells us then that a has got to be odd if there's going to be a solution. So we can immediately just read off that a has to be odd in order for its power of m plus 1 to be equal to an even number. So now we might start to think about the same thing. What about for m? Can this be odd or even? So if we assume, let's assume that m is even, then we'll have a to the m we could write as a to the 2 times, let's say, r, where r is some positive integer, if m is going to be even. Then what we'll be able to do is write this as a square number. So we could write this as a to the r squared, just rearranging the indices there. Then in a moment we'll be able to exploit the fact that 2 to the power of n is always a multiple of 4. So to get this, we see that a to the power of r, this is just an odd number raised to some power, so this will be some odd number. So we can write this as, let's say, 2k plus 1 squared. So then a to the m plus 1, when we expand the bracket, we'll get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 plus another one, so plus 2. So you can see this is a multiple of 4 plus 2. But 2 to the power of n, because n's greater than 1, this is always going to be a multiple of 4, so actually this can't ever be equal to 2 to the power of n for n greater than 1. So you see we've reached a contradiction here where we've worked under the assumption that m is even. So then we can conclude that m has to be odd. So now that we've established that both a and m have got to be odd, we can start to think about actually factorising a to the m plus 1. So if we think about a to the power of m plus 1 as a polynomial in the variable a, you can see that because m is an odd power, this is always going to be equal to 0 when a is negative 1, because you'll have negative 1 to an odd power will still give you negative 1, then add 1 to that will get 0. So this is always equal to 0 when a is negative 1, and this is particularly useful because now we can use the factor theorem and say that a to the m plus 1 must have a factor the form a plus 1, then we need to find out what this remaining piece is. So because a is minus 1 is a root, we have a plus 1 is a factor. So then we could use polynomial division to find this remaining piece, or perhaps you just know this result. You could even use the partial sum formula for a geometric sequence if you like, but one way or another we'll get a to the m minus 1 minus a to the m minus 2 and so on, this alternating sequence of powers of a all the way down to a squared minus a and plus 1. So here we don't actually need to split into different cases, we'll always have, you can see our even powers of a, because m is an odd number, you've got m minus 1, m minus 3 and so on, they're all of our positive terms, whereas our odd powers m minus 2, m minus 4 and so on, all the way down to a to the power of 1, those are all of our negative terms. So we'll always get something that looks like this, we don't just split into different cases depending on the parity of m. So then we've got this expression, and let's look at this in a bit more detail. You can see that a is an odd number, so a raised to all of these different powers. These are all odd numbers being added and subtracted, and 1 is also an odd number. And how many of these have we got? Well, we've actually got, we go up to m minus 1, but there's also this plus 1 term. So we've got m odd numbers all being added together. And don't forget that m is itself an odd number. So actually we've got an odd number of odd numbers all being added and subtracted 
from each other. So this means that our solution, our answer to this, is always going to be odd, because we've got an odd number of odd numbers being added and subtracted. So we can say with certainty then that this factor is going to be an odd number. So this doesn't seem to cause any problems at a glance, but don't forget that a to the m plus 1, this is supposed to be equal to 2 to the power of n. We factorise this, so a plus 1 and this big term here, these are both supposed to be factors of 2 to the n. But we know that the factors of 2 to the n, if you think about the prime factorisation, it's just made up of 2s, so the only actual odd factor of 2 to the power of n is 1. This is the only one that would work. So then we seem to get this result that a to the m minus 1 minus and so on plus all of these terms. This factor here has to be equal to 1 because that's the only possible odd factor of 2 to the n. You can see this is eventually going to lead us to a contradiction now. So if this is equal to 1 then we've got 2 to the n is supposed to be equal to a to the m plus 1 which we factorised as a plus 1 multiplied by our term which we now know is actually equal to 1. So we can completely get rid of this term, this is all just equal to 1. So then we get a to the m plus 1 is equal now just to a plus 1 multiplied by 1. So we can take away 1 from both sides, you get a to the m is equal to a, which leaves you with the only possible solution is that a is equal to 1, or perhaps negative 1. But this is a contradiction, because we already had the assumption that a has to be strictly greater than 1. So then we can say that there aren't any solutions in this case. So we've started with the assumption that this is going to work, we've established a and m are both odd, and we've used this to factorise a to the m plus 1. We know that this factor has got to be equal to 1, because that's the only possible odd factor. But then this leads us to the result that a has to be plus or minus 1. So we can conclude then that unfortunately there aren't actually any solutions to this equation where we impose that our integers all have to be strictly greater than 1. But don't forget there were lots of solutions where we allowed a, m and n to be equal to 1. And we can actually get more solutions as well by setting them equal to 0 or introducing negative integers as well.